I'm Ryan Friedlinghaus, CEO of the world famous West Coast Customs. What started as a $5,000 loan from my grandfather became this. The most creative and innovative custom car shop on the planet. This is my world. And this is how it's done. to reality, you'll see it all inside West Coast Customs. So Alienware is a company that's reached out to us to build them a H1 Hummer. They're a big part of uh, Dell Computers. They bought this, this brand called Alienware, which is a gaming company, which is into heavily into computers and gaming. So Rory found a company called Predator Hummer, which actually is a company that converts these H1 Hummers into the Duramax rebuilt Hummer. What's up, Ryan? What's up, Ryan? How you doing, brother? Good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, bro? What's up, Alex? Alex, Ryan. How you doing, man? Josh. Josh, what's up, man? So this is it, huh? This is it. This is the new truck for you. Nice. Man. It's going to work perfect, I think. Even oh, yeah. So what we got here, Duramax engine. See how far back it sits here? Right. Kind of helps out with the center of gravity. You got your Allison transmission. Allison transmission is a six-speed tranny. That's why we're getting over 20 miles per gallon on the highway. Uh, selectable two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive transfer case behind that. Wow. So when you're cruising down the highway, you're in two-wheel drive. You know, you want to do some donuts or whatever, you just crank the wheel, punch it, dude. You're just all over the place. Wow. You hit snow, ice, whatever, drop in a four-wheel drive, you're set. Uh, we've got our upgraded Predator cooling system right here. So we build that uh, aluminum radiator, intercooler, all that stuff. Um, rated for, uh, actually keep the engine runner right at 200 degrees, day in, day out, 100 miles an hour, anywhere you, um, zero to 60, right in the five and a half second range. <laughs> yeah. And everybody gets out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. For sure they do. So for us, this is a perfect truck to start with. We'll be able to start this build with something that's great and do what we do to it. <laughs> I got the laptop. Dell and Alienware came to us and said they want to build a military style Hummer. So the Hummer was their idea. They ha they love the old school square body, you know, H1 Hummers. So they wanted to build one of those, a little bit modern, so it could be driven, you know, back and forth to events, but also have the theme of the Alienware brand and have a bunch of gaming stations set up on it where these guys can show up to an event, set it up within 30 minutes and be ready to rock and roll. Uh, the brand is based on, on performance in any category and being the best at what we do. Uh, bold and, and elegant design, so making a statement with your products. These, these aren't the type of desktops that you're going to put underneath your desk. These right. are the types that, that you're going to brag to your friends yeah. about. And so the idea was to, to potentially take a, an H1 Hummer and, like Pierce said, make it even more powerful. So, yeah, we were looking at that one. We like the military spec piece a lot. Um, there's a few of them that have these kind of blast deflectors on them. You can see here these lines which are kind of similar to the vents that we got on top of that, which we really like. We've got eight gaming stations that we want to fit into the Hummer. Four laptop, four desktop, uh, two of those big bad boys, and then two of the uh, Aurora, which is the smaller version of that. Okay. We put the, the towers right here, the uh, uh, screen here, keyboard here. Could put a seat right, right, right there. The less movement of hardware we can right, have yeah, with exactly. each setup, yeah. the better. That's what, it's yeah, be. that's what I was thinking. Was these ones back here should stay? Yeah, no problem making uh, you know as many permanent fixtures as we can. Right, and Definitely. then the ones that have to come out come out. Because uh, yeah. I, I think unplugging all that and having all that stuff move out every single time, yeah. something's gonna go wrong. Screens are here. We we make uh, off the front of the screens has a the table. We put it right at that height. Guy in a wheelchair rolls right up. Even kids. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> truck. But it has a big giant Black motor, space. transmission, yeah. wheels, all of it. There's no space in it. Right. Stairs yeah. off the back, and then uh, I think Jeff was saying that maybe uh, backrests. Yeah, we have to have a backrest so you don't fall off. We want it to be the coolest summer out there. I mean, it's got to roll down the road and just be killer. I mean, Alienware systems are the, the most powerful, the best. They're, they're 
crazy how powerful they are. This Hummer's got to match that. So we challenge people with tough timelines, but we come to the best, and we uh, we expect they'll deliver. We picked West Coast Customs uh, because we believe they're going to be a real good fit for the Alienware brand, uh, as Alienware represents uh, the best in breed and, and the best class performance. We feel like West Coast is going to be the the guys out there that'll represent it the best and and find the the most unique way to integrate our products into a, a vehicle tour that will be used for years. To make the ultimate gaming vehicle, we're going to start with one badass machine, a Hummer H1 that's been souped up by Predator. Starting at the front, we're going to modify all the existing tubing to fit the Aurora gaming system, along with three monitors, which will all be wheelchair accessible. On the top, we're going to build a custom roof rack so they can haul all their extra gear. Moving to the back, we're going to build a station to hold four gaming laptops along with monitors raised up high so the audience could check out the intense gaming action. Inside the vehicle, we're going to remove the back seats for two Area 51 gaming stations and take out the front passenger seat and put in another Aurora machine. And not to forget the driver, we're going to add a sweet sound system for them. The final touches, we're going to be creating a blue glow throughout the Hummer to give it that Alienware effect. And then we'll wrap it all in matte black with the Alienware hieroglyphics ghosted in. We're going to really sit down, put together a really good game plan, make sure all the guys have all the stuff they need, make sure they know the direction they need to go into. It's not a very complex build, there's a bunch of features to it, but I mean it's going to be pretty straightforward. Hopefully these guys can knock this thing out on time and early ahead of schedule this time so we can do our testing we need to do. It's definitely an awesome brand to work with and launching this thing, they're going to launch this thing at Comic Con, which is a big event for the gamers and it's here locally and it'll be, I think it'll be fun to take that thing out and get everybody's response out of it. Coming up on Inside West Coast Customs. The frustrating part of it is it's a waste of money on materials. I'm getting a little irritated with the whole, oh, we got plenty of time. And I'm probably going to say that I hate it more seeing it in person. <laughs> I just want to put as much of this this Alienware brand into the truck where it looks right. You know what I mean? These these TV monitors are going to have to come out for when the thing's driving because you can't have these big monitors in your way. Yeah. Your way. And then this tent, I, I think we should find somebody that can make it all, so we don't have to try to d with it and have it printed, and we don't have to worry about it. So we can focus on this stuff. The, one of the big problems is going to be is the electronics. There's a ton of electronics. Everything's got to work together. Darren's very new still with with us and with the company, and this is a large weight to put on his shoulders. So I'm going to make sure that Chad steps in on this one since there isn't a lot of wood fabrication on this. But Chad is very familiar with wiring and computers and all that stuff. I'm going to make him work side by side with with Darren on this one just so we can make sure we got all of our T's crossed and we don't have no issues. We'll put together the six P's on this one, which is going to be proper planning. It's a little bit more time than what we usually get on some of these builds. I mean, there's been some crazy deadlines. To me, this is still a crazy deadline. I mean, I think this is probably a three-month job that we got to get done in a month. So the guys are going to have to work double time and really get, you know, get, get ahead of this build so we don't fall behind at the end of it. So I think the next step is get everything pulled off, get this rack pulled off, get everything pulled off so we can look at it. do now is build a mount here that has the computer kind of floating and then what I'm going to do in the center now is we're going to build a box that, that houses all the basically all the electronics everything as far as running all the computers and monitors and then to try and give it a somewhat of a cool look we're going to build what looks like two waves going to the passenger and the driver's side and we'll put their branding in there and all that but what they actually will do is be a part of the metal box and they'll come out and they'll come up and they'll hold the monitor up as high as we can get it to the roof. Instead of 
getting templates and cutting out cardboard and trying stuff, I think I'm just gonna go to the computer, draw the basic bottom dimensions that I want, and then I'll just figure out what I want from there. All right, I'm gonna draw the parts now. Well, I'm gonna draw a few of the lines that would, which will give me my basic dimensions where everything's gotta sit, and then from there, I'll start filling in the lines to get the shape I want. The program I'm using is called Graphite. I like it because it's a lot easier than most of the programs where I just click lines and it makes it a lot faster than having to put in all the measurements to tell the lines where to go. We're actually gonna go with this one that drops down and then we're gonna go take it upstairs and add a couple of their branding in here with the alien heads on it. We want to put their branding here, like a couple alien heads, okay. and then maybe maybe even put two small ones up there. That looks good. Go go up just a little. Let's see, 12. Let's take it up a little more. I'd rather be able to be seen than hidden. All right, so I just came from Jeff's office. We got all the final drawings on here, so I'm gonna load them into the computer right now, and then we'll start running them. Basically, this is a hydrojet, which is a high-pressure water cutting machine. It uses about uh, 50, 50 to 60,000 psi of water and abrasive to cut through basically any type of material you want. This build mostly, as far as I'm concerned, most of it's going to be cut on here. Basically, here's one of the drawings that we did upstairs, and we're getting ready to run it out on the hydrojet. And I actually I like this machine a lot because it makes my life a lot easier. Hydrojet is actually a useful machine, but it is kind of expensive. It's, uh, it costs about a half a million dollars. These two pieces are going to be in here, fixed together and then light it so you can see the uh, branding. There'll be a box in the middle here that holds all the electric stuff, electronics, routers and all that. And then uh, there's another piece I gotta put across here that'll hold these two pieces together. And on each side, on the passenger and driver side, the monitors will just go in and click in here. I know that when we looked at it up on the computer, I didn't like it. And I'm probably gonna say that I hate it more seeing it in person. So you want two. Uh, tubes is what I envision. Tubes. To me, design-wise, I mean, he should be able to see that. That's just, it doesn't look right. I mean, it looks like a big t-shirt in there. I don't know what it looks like. The frustrating part of it is it's a, it's a waste of money on materials. It's a waste of his time. And now we've just wasted two to three days on something we're just going to scrap, which sucks because we could, we're going to need those two to three days later on in this build. And he's like, oh, don't stress. we got 27 days left. Oh, yeah, right. In 20 days, we'll see how he's feeling in 20 days. It's going to be, it's going to be a last minute thing. And again, these types of builds, I hate them coming to the last minute to try to figure things out because these vehicles got to go on the road and they have to be tested. They have to be, you know, be gone through 110 times. And these guys, for some reason, they just don't comprehend that. That's it. Four laptops, four desktops, turn it all on, plug it all in, make sure it's all up and running. All right. We got games we can play with it? Uh, there should be some games built in that we'll be able to test out with. All right. All right. Good luck. All right, um, let's get it all figured out, um, wired, so we don't have that problem that we did on last build. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get going on it. Let's go. All right, man. We're working on the Alienware Hummer, and basically we got to make the front of it accessible for wheelchairs and stuff. So I got a good friend, John Box, coming by, who's in the chair, and he's gonna give me some pointers on what I need for different sizes and different stuff like that. So this is what we're working with. We're basically trying to accomplish this in right. the front. All right. And so what we need to kind of figure out is do with the front as far as wheelchairs being accessible to it. Might have to be concerned about height. So if you've got the ability to change the height of the keyboard platform, 
maybe your line of sight for uh, the monitor. And the other thing is the uh, the length of the wheelchair and the access. So, I mean, like, di different people have different leg lengths. I mean, if their legs are out far, you're going to need clearance for that. Okay. So, Boozer and I are really good friends. He's asked me to come over and help out. I'm uh, appointed by the President of the United States, the U.S. Access Board, so I have a little bit of knowledge about disabled needs. Uh, they're working on a great project here, and I'm doing my best to help them make that accessible to you know, various disabilities. I think what's on my mind now with what you said, if I open this up, there's gonna be plenty of room with you sitting right where you're at. So I think if I just make it where the keyboard is adjustable, let's say three to four inches below your point yep. and four or five inches above your point, we should be able to cover everybody. Yeah. Basically, we kind of came up with all our ideas. We'll leave that stuff there and move it, right. and we'll make the keyboard adjustable, and that'll wrap it all up. Everything he gave me made a big difference. I didn't think about a few of the things that he brought up as far as the height and the way the legs fit and different chairs and stuff like that. So it makes a big difference on what I'm going to do now versus what I was going to do yesterday. Okay, okay, Ishmael. So this is the Hummer. Real simple for you, that's why I haven't really bothered you on this build. You just gotta do the two front seats. So I think we do their logo, the Alienware logo, in the headrest, not on this, probably up here, so they can see it from the window. And some some thread like this, like a teal. Yeah, like a teal color. Okay, that's not teal, homie. Well, what is it? Oh, I don't know, you're colorblind, so you don't know what color it is, really. Dude, but this is teal. Which one? Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna replace all the leather. It's gonna remain black, but no more red. It's gonna be teal, like kind of blue. This is the centerpiece for the seat. The foam that I'm gonna use, the lines that I wanna, that I have to sew. So, all I have to do is put some glue, a little bit of glue. This is a little trick that I choose, like when I don't have a uh, thread that is thick enough, like the one we want to use in this case, I just double, double thread. And it's looking beautifully simple, nice. See, so once I put some glue on the center so I can glue it down, it's gonna be tight and firm. The biggest issue, again, is gonna come down on this build is the wiring, I mean, and all the stuff to be tested and make sure it all works. It seems like I always sound like I'm repeating myself, but at the same time, it's the truth. Is that's really, on these builds that we do for, whether they're a Dell computer or they're Virgin or whatever they are, when they consist of computers and gaming, everything's gotta work when they show up to an event. They can't have any issues. This is a lot of wiring. So how many days do you think you need? Work. Five. five days. Yeah. Starting when? The guys really, really need to get the together. And this is Chad and Darren because they're going to be working together on this. And I hope they get it done. Darren's always so laid back. Oh, if I got five days, I'll get this done. He won't be done in 10 days for sure. 100%. I bet him. $1,000 he won't be. And Chad, you know, both of them, for some reason, they really play this whole thing like it's easy. Don't worry about it. Really laid back. And for a client like this, we really can't have any issues. So I hope that they take this, they think about it for a little bit, figure it out today, and then tomorrow they really start wiring this truck. Chad and Darren both got their heads on chopping blocks because I'm getting a little irritated with the whole, oh, we got plenty of time. Ryan, although we have, what, two and a half, three weeks, Ryan's convinced that we're not gonna make it. He's pretty cynical like that, especially on this build. Um, you know, part of me and Darren, at least I feel I'm not worried about it, but what worries me is um, on Boozer's end. Boozer has taken a lot upon himself um, to figure out how everything's going to be. He's actually taken stuff upon him that are my job and who are Darren's job. 
Um, so hopefully, as far as his planning, it's gonna work out. See, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place this right here, but the plexiglass is gonna be behind it, behind the metal. So when I put the LEDs, the eyes light up. All I gotta do is uh, ask Shaq for some uh, LEDs, blue LEDs, so, and actually start working on the seats. Now I run out of, out of excuses. It's getting there, little by little. It's gonna put the thing together with the rest of the seat. When I'm done, I'm gonna start running the wires, put it, installing the LEDs. Coming up on Inside West Coast Customs. What are we doing out here? So Josh, who are you guys? <laughs> Moose, yes. I think we need to have a meeting. All right. Uh, I'm freaking out a little. I just keep looking at that clock. I come out here, my chest starts hurting more and more and more. And nobody's working on the truck. We're actually working behind the scenes right now. We're actually who's we're? We're, we're? Who's we're? Uh, me and me. No. Yeah, that's what I, I'm worried about. I just, wanted, I just wanted to do a quick little meeting on what's left, what needs to be done before this can be done, and all those types of things, because I don't want it to be last minute. Oh my God, we got to line X this, and he can't put this in until this gets line X, and that's going to hold us up, and all those things that I think we're still forgetting. Definitely everybody's still very, you know, hey, it's, we're gonna, we have plenty of time. Oh, we're good. But 16 days isn't enough time, I don't think. There's a lot of work that's still left. I swear to God, if I say all this you don't write it down, Rory. So, right there, door jams. All right, I'm just saying. I just want to make sure we get this little hit list, put it on the car, and just make sure we stay in on top of it, really. Hey, what language did you write this in? That roof rack looks stupid. I'm sorry. It looks great. The no. tubing work that you did is great, but it doesn't match any of the other tubing on the truck. I just bought the rendering. I, I think that's a complete loser. You want me to go get the rendering? I don't care if you get the rendering or not. You should know as a fabricator. Because you use the standard like, industry. Hold on, hold on. You're the lead on this build. And if you look at this build and you know that it's supposed to be military, off-road, like mean feeling, like tough, wouldn't you match the I mean, everything else is big. That's little, it looks like my play school first roof rack. These days are ticking, ticking, ticking away, and things aren't getting done. So I'm about to go talk to the guys about the six piece. I mean, we talked about it in the beginning of this build was proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Obviously, from the beginning to the build to now, we've had to do things two and three different times. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna make a little list. I'm gonna post it up on a couple of spots around the build just so the guys can remember the six piece. I made something for you. Certificate? It's a certificate for you. Six so piece. The six piece. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. I mean, this is, the six P's are really serious because I think if we did proper planning, we would definitely prevent piss poor performance. Not really in you because you've been doing a great job, but in people like Darren and Boozer and other people that I have to do things two and three times. is making sure that, I mean, it's a Hummer, so it's an off-road vehicle. Uh, we don't want no wires getting snagged. We don't want anything 
you know, any kind of debris, catching the wire, ripping our wires out. So we have to make sure that it's tucked really good and, and hidden really well. My main concern is when, you know, Boozer could finish up welding up all these poles or all these structures and whatnot, we can send out, get powder coated, and, you know, hopefully that's not last minute. Where's Boozer today? Are you coming in today? Why? He's know. in like Vegas again or something. Get out of here. I'm on vacation. He's not coming in until Monday. He's not on vacation. Stop saying that. Hello? Seriously? Hey, what's up? You seriously aren't coming today? And you seriously went and did that car? Say it again. Who is it? Yeah, I did. My phone's messing up. All right, I'm just letting you know, Chad and Darren, Chad and Darren are blaming everything on you again. <laughs> that is not getting... Uh -huh not getting done because you got to come here. You're not here to Listen finish. To him, dude. You're, You're, taking together, a, huh? You're taking a vacation until Tuesday, you know? Anyway, well, I don't know what to say. Me and Chad went over. Chad's got a lot to do that he can be doing already. So if he's saying that, I don't get why. Me and Tonto, he's supposed to be running all the wires through the whole truck right now. Today. So I don't get why, why, what I'm, how I'm holding him up. Yeah, he's just laid back. You know, he doesn't think I'll fire him if he doesn't get this done. I don't know. All right, I'll be here tomorrow. All right, bye. Later. I love how you talk it's, it's just getting them fired up, dude. Get you fired up. Uh, how, how did I talk right now? You didn't. I just didn't say you talk you, you just like doing that to fire him up? Yeah, get everybody up, up, though. Shut up and work. Because I know you're going to leave at 5.59, so let's... I'm going to leave at 5.45 <laughs> because I'm huh? it. Added up smoke breaks. That you should leave at eight. At eight? Maybe four thirty. Bye. So the Alienware people need some storage for their computers, and I need some inspiration for this build. I can't have them putting these things in normal computer cases. This truck needs to have a badass military look. So Ryan from Predator offered to take me down to Camp Pendleton and meet the guys from Marsoc. Hopefully, they'll be able to hook me up with some ideas for this build. Hey, Bill. Oh, hey. What's going how on? How are you doing, man? Good. How are you, man? Good, good. Nice Even the boxes are custom. Hey, Ryan. Hey. my good friend, Bill. How you doing, right? Bill. Megan. My wife, hey. Megan. Hey, Bill. how are you? Nice to meet you. We need to come borrow this shop. No problem. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. The trains are sick. Yeah, we actually do all kinds of work here, too. We're doing, right now, we're doing a water pump on this one. So this pile of parts is for that ATV? Exactly. They'll uh, rebuild it. And that pile of parts, I'm not sure. <laughs> that pile <laughs> of parts are just extra parts. parts. We have a lot of those at the shop, too. Right, it happens. <laughs> it's kind of your spare. A space. good mechanic always has spare parts. That's, that's right. Always say. So if you think this is something, you really need to go see what our guys are doing. I want to. All right, let's do it. All right, let's go. Um, is that, am I supposed to be scared? No, you're not supposed to be scared, but this is what we're going to have to wear where we're going. So I have a kit for everyone. Brian, Megan, and Ryan. Ready. Jump into the Humvee. I'll go front just so I don't get sick. Make sure all personal items are tied down. Man, it's a beautiful day. Wow. Yeah. What are we doing out here? The guys should be here somewhere. Are they on a uh, tactical mission? They are. They're out doing some training. They right usually on. come through here. Pretty sweet. Hey, what's going on? So Josh, who are you guys? We're MARSOC. We're the Marine Special Operations Command. Uh, we're actually 
United States Marine Corps Forces, but we work for United States Special Operations Command. So Ryan brought me down here to get some inspiration for this build we're doing. We're building the Hummer for Alienware computers, and it's got a military feel to it, and there's some pieces that we need. We need some boxes that we can transport a lot of these computers in just to give it this whole military feel for this build. Well, these vehicles are definitely our lifeline, you know, on deployment. We're living and working out of them day in and day out, so we've got to cram everything we've got into them. Um, so yeah, we can definitely show you some stuff, you know, cool. how, we, how we kind of manage what we've got. And yeah, just to get some, some yeah, get some ideas and just so I can take it back to the shop and build this build this Hummer. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go take a look at the vehicle. Cool. So Ryan, this is this is Marsoc's uh, variant of the Humvee. This is United States United States Special Operations Command's GMV. Obviously, it's got more machine guns on it. Um, and like we talked about, we got a lot of guys with a lot of gear doing a lot of operations. So we got to manage space the best we can. Um, maybe something like this would work for you. I don't know. This is a box that we kind of came up with that we throw a lot of our equipment in. Just again, just to help us manage space. So Ryan, if you take a look in here. We've obviously got racks for all the ammunition for the machine gun systems up top. We've got communication systems, so you see the space management's pretty tight. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got four, five, six guys at a time in here, fully loaded with kit, you know, out conducting operations for long periods of time. So, space is at a premium. Well, hopefully, you got to see everything it is you came to take a look at. Yeah, I got a good, I got a good trucks. vibe now. Great. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, I guess the next time, you know, I don't know if you guys got any time, but you guys could maybe come out to Comic Con to see this. Humvee when we unveil our Humvee, the, the ultimate gamer one. That'd be an awesome opportunity. We may not be, be cool. around, but we'll certainly try. Yeah, see if you guys can come out. Definitely. Be, be cool. Ryan, you got to give me some of these boxes now. Yeah. We're yeah. good? All right. I'll come through. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. It's nice meeting you. Absolutely. You too. Thanks, Bill. All right. Nice meeting All you. All right. Yeah. We're taking this one home, though, okay? Hopefully Ryan saw some great inspiration on our vehicle, and uh, he invited us down to Comic-Con, and we're really looking forward to it, training permitting. So today was a pretty good day. Ryan brought me down to Camp Pendleton. I got to meet the official MARSOC guys. I got to see some of the boxes that they use in these trucks, which I think hopefully Ryan can get me a couple of those and we can use them for the Alienware build. But ultimately I can get back now to the shop, get this truck built, and hopefully get it to Comic-Con on time. Coming up on Inside West Coast Customs. So with four hours left on the clock, only three guys here right now working on the Hummer. It looks very, very sad. We have less than four days to get this Alienware build done. We're definitely in the same position I feel like we're always in. It's always like the guys are pointing their fingers at, oh, I gotta wait for this guy to get this done and this guy to get this done before I can do my job. And realistically, if they would just plan out their, their time, and that goes back to the six Ps that I said, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Right now, we're definitely at piss poor performance because none of the guys are working together. There's a lot of stuff that can still be done while this guy's doing this and, oh, let me do this while he's doing this and then once that's done but they don't think like that and I think this is the time and this is the build that's really gonna I th in my head make us make some changes in this shop I mean these guys have had many many different chances and now it's time to say you know what okay this is it My goal today, this morning, I'm gonna turn on the generator and then I gotta test the ethernet connection for each little port I made. It's a lot better than I thought. Um, right now, I only have two that aren't working. I got four more back here that I haven't put on the tips yet. Um, these guys right here. We're all kind of holding each other up. I, I just gotta make sure this is working and then Joe has to dress up that whole generator. So hopefully this won't take too long. Today I'm here to actually wrap the Hummer that's behind us here. We're going to go from a white Hummer to a matte black Hummer. It's going to be hard, uh, time consuming, but it'll look great when we're done. As far as time wise, I mean, I feel good with time as long as we get the parts today. We're still waiting for the neon lights. So Neon Lights is supposed to be here today, and the truck has to be done tomorrow. One of the things we're battling today is the humidity. We're having monsoon kind of weather, so it's hot, it's 100% humidity, and this is water-based paint, which means we're spraying water with water, so it's going to take a little longer to dry. So we got some curing issues there, but and then, then it was just add a little bit more cure time to it, check it, wash it in between flashes, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. 
and then at the end of the day we get them cleared and we're done. itself is going pretty well. I'm having a little bit of uh, lifting issues in the rough corners right here, which is sometimes expected. Uh, the way I put it down though, and um, kind of took some steps to eliminate the lifting, um, it shouldn't be doing it, and it still is. So I called out the representative for the manufacturer of the material. He's gone over a couple things, suggested what he thinks might be wrong and what we're going to try to do to resolve the issue. The first thing we're going to try is we're going to take a hypodermic needle and a little bit of super glue, and we're going to try injecting a little bit of super glue into the trouble areas, because it's not really major where we're having problems. If uh, we inject the glue into the uh, popping areas and it doesn't stay down and it lifts within just a few minutes like it is right now obviously it's not gonna work and we're just gonna have to start all over on those areas so with four hours left on the clock only three guys here right now working on the Hummer it looks very very sad definitely a big concern is if it's not ready by tomorrow with Chad and Boozer both having to go away this weekend I don't know what's going to happen, so by tomorrow I'm going to make a decision of they're either going to stay and get this thing done for me so we don't look bad to these people, or they're going to leave and not come back to a job. So we'll see what happens. So my deadline for the Alienware has now come and gone. Um, I give the guys a couple days of fluff just because I know that this always happens. We actually don't look that bad. I mean, I went over it this morning when I got here with some of the guys just to see what's left and what isn't. Chad and a couple of the guys stayed really, really late last night to get everything working, which was good. We got a couple pieces out of powder coating that should be done this afternoon. We're taking a couple other pieces off that are going to get linexed, and then everything by end of day today looks like it'll be done. Hopefully we can move it out of that area, get it out into an area where we can get everything hooked up and tested, and then, you know, it doesn't look that bad. I was actually pretty nervous yesterday, but today I feel like everybody's on the ball, they know what they need to do, everybody's got direction, and they're getting it done. How you doing, man? Good, man. Got some goodies? Yeah! Yeah! Alright, so the bad boys, here they are. Sweet. So Ryan got inspired while we were at the base, and so... So Ryan pulled through for me in the 11th hour. He got the right cases. I got Moscow on the job to get them finished and get this vehicle done. I have a really big concern with Boozer just not being here for the rest of this build because he was the lead guy. He did list. He actually, you know, figured out what he needed to do before he did it. These guys are really running wild right now trying to just get it done, and that's where we find a lot of the problems to be. But I'm going to see what happens. I mean, he, he got most of his stuff done before he left, so I think we're in good shape. I got Moscow helping us out on this. I had to pull him from another job, and he'll make sure this thing gets done. Alienware tech guys have joined us at the shop today to load up all their computers with the latest gaming software for this big event at Comic-Con. I'm holding my breath and I have all my fingers crossed that this thing's gonna get done on time. Coming up on Inside West Coast Customs. I was worried throughout the build, is this thing gonna make it? That is a mobile gaming LAN party. Well guys, I got a tournament to play. I'm taking this truck down to Comic-Con, where it's going to be the main feature of the Alienware booth. This rig's going to blow people's minds and definitely draw some serious attention. There's Bill. 
Or is he out? I'm gonna smoke him right now. Hey, dude. <laughs> What's up, man? I thought you were right there. I was smoking you right oh, there. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't happen like that. What's up, that. guys? We sneak out in front of you, man. So, man. How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. What's up, brother? So this is it. Completed. Wow, looks great, man. I mean, I know talking to you out there and, and explaining what we're doing and then being able to see it is two totally different things. Amazing. It's really cool the way we set it up. When you look at a Hummer, you don't think there's that much. There's not a lot of room in them. You know what I mean? We fight for space every day. Every day, right? Every day. <laughs> the cool thing about this is now that you see it, all these machines got to go in those cases that you got us. Right. So right. it's like they got to transport all this stuff. So those that cases end up working out perfect. We foam the inside of them. They have slots for everything. You guys got to play. We got to kick these kids off. You guys got to play. Let's do it. We can right. take care of that. Yeah. Who was that I just took out? You guys have better guns. Oh yeah, talk about the old man now. Okay, <laughs> six, you're fired. You don't even aim. I don't need to aim. Make sure you don't jump from too high, Bill. You might uh, break a leg. Oh really? Back and Shatter a hip on the way down. Let the old man teach you boys something. Here we go. Dude. Oh wait, what is going on? What is going down right now? I took him out. Bill, what's going down? I got him. You're making me nervous right now. I got him. I won't let you down. The guys from Marsoc seem pretty impressed with what we've done to this Hummer. Hopefully, Alienware will be just as happy with the finished product. <laughs> wow. wow. Brian. Amazing. 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 Wow. wow. Look at Definitely this. a challenge for us. That is a mobile gaming LAN party. LAN party. That's a good one. LAN like party. That. Yeah. We made it here. I think everybody's excited to see it. Yeah. And really, I'm, I'm excited yeah. to see the response out of everybody. You just drive up, you plug it in, turn your systems on, and you start gaming. That's, uh, that's what we wanted, and you guys delivered. It's fantastic. So the whole thing's networked up? Everything's networked together. So you can be playing up there. You can be playing her against. In the, I mean, it's pretty amazing. And then it all comes apart. That was a challenging part. Yeah, How do you get it all like this right. and have it all break down? It's a street it? legal vehicle, right? Yes, it's street legal. I think Ryan and the guys from West Coast Customs absolutely nailed the design. You know, the, the, the look, the specs, the feel, the power, it's everything we asked for and more. They over-delivered and we're, we couldn't be happier with the choice of going with the with West Coast Customs. So we did a good job? Uh, guys, this Fantastic. is perfect. Awesome. Uh, it's kind of a, a lifetime ambition for me to work with these guys. So for us to knock something out with uh, West Coast Customs has been really, really cool. And I think that... Yeah, we're happy. We're super pleased. This is a uh, once-in-a-lifetime experience to get these guys to build something this cool that, that Alienware own. We'll take it around the, the United States for the next couple of years. It's going to be a staple of our brand, and people are going to be able to get hands-on experience with the, the product. So I'm super happy, and it, it's completely captured the look and feel of Alienware. Couldn't ask for it to be a better, better-looking vehicle. I still didn't think we would all be able to sit up here like that. <laughs> no, there's a lot of kit in the back of that, isn't there? Yeah. Well, guys, I got a tournament to play. Okay. Uh, the guys showed up from Alienware and from Mother to see the final product for the first time. I think they're amazed. I mean, it's definitely when you take a when you take a rendering and you really make it a reality. It's it's big, and it's a big, I think this was a big bang just because for us is the first time that we've ever done anything where there's eight gaming stations that are all linked together, and we really had to build it out in this. I mean, everybody thinks a Hummer's big, but a Hummer's really small when you think about the room on the inside and on the outside of it, and to fit everything in there and to make it all work and to make people make people play comfortably I think we pulled it off and I think it definitely shows in today's reveal I think Chad and Darren were tested on this build and I think they completed the task I mean I was worried throughout the build is this thing gonna make it are we gonna you know is everything gonna work on time are these people gonna be happy with it you know I think we pulled it all off and the guys showed at the 11th hour that their jobs are important and this build is important and they pulled it off and it works everybody's playing games I think it's time for me to get back to the shop next time on inside west coast customs i just got a really good phone call from adam the owner of juice blends he wants like a 34 foot rv that we can gut 